boom, it's next time already. Um, because I had to miss a day or two uh, this week, I decided to do two in a row here today in this spot with the chickens behind me. Um, can you see? You can see the canoe. Um, I was wanting to show the hoop house where you might remember if you've watched a lot of these. Um, one time when it was raining, I brought the canoe in there, which was really fun. But now it's all planted with the tomatoes and the canoe would kind of crush it. So unfortunately that's out the window. It looks like a rainy week ahead, so I might have to come up with some creative solutions um, of where I might put the canoe um, or what reading in a canoe really means. So if things get a little wacky next week, now you know. Um, a Day with Wilbur Robinson by William Joyce. I picked this really just because uh, it's a great book and the day looks like today. I mean, look at that blue sky, look at that green. Feels kind of like late spring rather than summer, which is right where we are. Really love the blue of this end paper. Okay, A Day with Wilbur Robinson by William Joyce. I was going to spend a day at Wilbur Robinson's house. Wilbur is my best friend. His house is the greatest place to visit. I walked up and said hello to the twin uncles, Dimitri and Spike. As always, Wilbur opened the door just before I knocked. Come on in, he said. Lefty will take your bag. So this guy on the first picture is actually the narrator, and this is Wilbur here with the dark brown hair. And Lefty is an octopus who works for him. All sorts of wacky things happening. It's kind of dull around here today, said Wilbur. I looked around. Aunt Billy was playing with her train set, Cousin Pete was walking the cats, and Uncle Gaston sat comfortably in the family cannon. Your dad needs you out in the backyard, he shouted as he blasted himself across the room. In the backyard, we found Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Robinson and their robot, Carl. They were scouring the lawn with the matter detector. We're looking for grandfather's false teeth, Mr. Robinson explained. Of course, we haven't seen grandfather lately either, he added. Could you boys go inside and ask around? In the den, Wilbur's sister, oh wait, back inside, we found Uncle Judlow, who was relaxing with his brain augmenter. It helps him think deep thoughts, Wilbur whispered. Mississippi spelled with O's instead of I's would be Masasopo, blurted Uncle Judlow. See, uh, what did I tell you, Wilbur exclaimed. Have you seen Grandfather Robinson's false teeth, I asked. Uncle Judlow blinked. They're wherever he left them, he answered, after some thought. Not very helpful, Uncle Judlow. In the den, Wilbur's sister Tallulah was talking on the phone and eating grapes. His other sister Blanche was modeling her new prom dress. Do the shoes match? she asked. They're swell, we chimed. Have you seen Grandfather Robinson's false teeth? I asked. Or Grandfather, asked Wilbur. Not lately, said Blanche. Yawning, Tallulah shook her head and ate another grape. We're striking out, said Wilbur, discouraged, and I'm hungry, so let's eat. Cousin Laszlo came by to demonstrate his new anti-gravity device. Have you seen Grandfather Robinson's fault teeth? I asked. Nope, but I bet they're floating around here someplace, mused Cousin Laszlo. Suddenly, the faint familiar strains of Potato Head Blues came wafting from the house. That's it, yelled Wilbur. It's Friday. Grandfather is in his lab working with his dancing frog band. We rushed to the lab, and sure enough, there was Grandfather with his friends, Mr. Ellington and Mr. Armstrong. Grandmother Robinson was helping. Have you found your teeth, Grandfather? shouted Wilbur over the music. Nah, I haven't seen him, he smiled. I guess we'll just keep looking, I volunteered. Third to appreciate it, said Grandfather, as the music played on. We found Grandfather, Wilbur announced as we ran outside. Good work, said Mr. Robinson. Now, if only we could find those teeth. Last time I was here, we were looking for your grandfather's glass eye, I reminded Wilbur as we walked. Yeah, he's always missing a part, Wilbur admitted. Ahoy, called Uncle Art, newly arrived from abroad. Looking for a lost bit of grandfather? Gadzooks, I've been homesick. By evening, grandfather's teeth were still nowhere to be found. At dinner, Uncle Gaston practiced shooting food out of a cannon. 
Carl and Lefty served while Grandfather did the best he could without his teeth. After dinner, Mrs. Robinson read Tarzan of the Apes aloud. Suddenly, one of the frogs jumped up onto my hand and did a Tarzan yodel. He was wearing Grandfather Robinson's teeth. I found them! I found them! I cried. Everybody shouted hooray, except for Wilbur, who did a Tarzan yodel too. Not sure I can do a Tarzan yodel. Let me try. The occasion called for a pillow fight. One of my favorite pictures. Looks so fun. Exhausted from the battle, we floated across the lawn and into a tree with the help of Cousin Laszlo's anti-gravity device. Wilbur and I stayed up while Uncle Art told hair-raising stories about his adventures in outer space as the frogs played softly on their violins. The next morning, the whole family was out front waving goodbye and singing, Yes, we have no bananas, just like they always do. I was kind of sad to leave, but I was ready to go home for a while. Goodbye, Wilbur, I said. Sorry it was such a dull day, Wilbur apologized. Hey, I had fun, I said. And Wilbur smiled. The sun was shining brightly as I walked away, slowly away. I looked back over my shoulder, and there was Wilbur, shooting himself out of Uncle Gaston's cannon with a farewell message. See you later, pal! The end. And I'll say it to you too, but uh, I don't have a cannon to shoot myself out of. See you later, everybody!